Welcome back to Mushroom Adventures. I'm going to start this episode off with a picture of my little finger. This is why you, uh, you wear gloves anytime you're working with duct work. It can get nasty and slice you open uh, very easily. So, always be safe. Now we're going to take a look at all the items you're going to be needing for your mushroom farm to work properly. There's a lot of stuff, so we're going to try to go in it and uh, look at each item one by one. First, we're going to start off with some distilled water. You'll be using this for your culture work. Um, I'm not quite sure between the idea of using chlorinated tap water or distilled water. I've never ha seen a comparison um, whether or not it hurt cultures long term. Um, I just try to be safe and use the distilled water instead of the chlorinated. Um, but it'll be used for test tubes, petri dishes, and liquid cultures. Here we have some regular agar, some antibiotic agar, and some dextrose. These will be some of the items will be used in making cultures and liquid cultures. Um, there's all kinds of recipes, um, especially with the types of sugars. You'll also be using yeast as well. Also, you're going to need a set of digital scales to measure all the ingredients for your culture work. Um, you definitely want to get a set of scales that can measure down to the uh, tenths of a gram because you will be needing some uh, detailed measurements. Here we see some test tubes that are, we're going to use for long-term culture storage. Um, inside is also a tongue depressor and a, an agar formula. Uh, this is very necessary if you want to preserve your own cultures for use instead of having to use multi-spore inoculations all the time. Here are some items we'll be using when we're doing uh, lab work. We have some isopropyl alcohol, 91%, some spray disinfectant, paper towels, a spray bottle for some alcohol, some uh, permafilm, wax film, an alcohol lamp, lighter, a, a good sharpie marker, a syringe for squirting some alcohol, an inoculation loop, um, a scalpel, and a face mask. There are different types of scalpels. This is the type I use. Um, it works fine. Um, really just make sure you gotta get it super hot and that it squeals when you touch the agar. And these are petri dishes from senmed.com they seem to have the best prices for bulk orders. I recommend them. Quart size mason jars are a must. Uh, you want to make sure you get the wide mouth variety. We'll be using them for grain containers as well as uh, liquid cultures. These are synthetic filter discs. They're what we'll be using for filters on our jars. Um, you can also use some other things like Tyvek or Micropore tape. These are really the best uh, tool to use. They get to be reused over and over again. You can see they're covered with rust and still going strong. Some people use their bare hands. Um, I choose to use latex or nitrile gloves when doing lab work. Um, to me it's a bit more cleaner and I'm not really bothered by it. but um, it really doesn't matter. It's a preference. A very important piece of equipment is a laminar flow hood. Um, you will definitely need one if you're going to do large scale mushroom work. Otherwise for small projects you can get away using what's called a glove box. But you're going to definitely need the flow hood if you're going to get serious about growing mushrooms. These are gusseted spawn bags from FungiPerfecti.com. There's other suppliers of the grow bags. Um, I choose these because the price is good and it's always been a reliable product. Um, we'll get into more of that later when we make grain spawn. You'll need some 18 or 20 gauge steel wire to uh, tie off the bags or if you really want to get fancy you can also get what's called an impulse sealer. They both work equally well and using the wire is a lot cheaper. You will need to eat many pies to keep you fueled up and energized. 
you will need pressure cookers to sterilize your grain and liquid cultures or whatever else you're putting in there. Um, this is one of the smaller types that you can fit four quart jars in at a time. Now this is the size of pressure cooker we're really going to need. It is an All-American 941 model. It holds up to 20 quart jars and six bags. For our grow space, we'll definitely need some wire rack shelving for our logs to uh, rest on. Make sure it's wire rack and uh, also make sure it's a nice sturdy brim. You definitely don't want the weight of the logs to uh, bend it or shift it or topple it over. This garage style plastic shelving works well for bags and jars. It uh, has tubes that lock together with the weight of the shelf uh, above it. They're sturdy and I've never really had a problem with them. Because you want your lab room sealed away from the rest of the house, I really recommend getting a oil heater. That way it doesn't produce any moving air and it'll keep your room nice and warm in the winter. You will want a good ventilation fan for your grow area, um, especially if you're using like a basement like I do. Um, this is a Hydro Farm 400 cubic feet per minute fan. It's the type I use. The general rule of thumb is that you want to use two cubic feet per minute of mo air movement per one square foot of grow space area. There are a few ways people go about chopping their straw up. Um, most people have access to a lawnmower. That's really a good way to do it if you just lay it out by your garage uh, wall. Um, another way to do it is use uh, one of these Floatron style leaf mulchers. It's what I used to use for a long time. But now I use an excellent Yardmaster wood chipper that gets uh, six bales of straw done and bagged up in about two hours. You will need a mechanism to pasteurize straw in. Now, this is a 55 gallon uh, nylon plastic food grade drum with a uh, water heating element uh, built into it. Um, we'll get more on to the construction of such an item uh, later. These are 18 gallon Rubbermaid totes that we'll be using to carry our pasteurized straw from our pasteurization area to our uh, log packing area. Um, they all have holes drilled in them so water can drain out. Six foot folding tables will be used so that we can spread our straw out and uh, spread out our grain spawn on top of it to make a, uh, a very fast and easy way to pack the logs. For the casing of our logs, we'll be using a plastic tubing. Um, this right here is 18 inch wide plastic tubing from International Plastics. Um, they have the best prices that I've found on it. Um, if you don't want to spend that much on a bulk amount of tubing, you can also get three foot wide window plastic, uh, fold it over long ways, and give it a couple strips of good packaging tape. And that'll work equally as well. So far, the best way I've found to humidify your grow area, whether it be a, a, a greenhouse setup or a small basement, has been these ultrasonic uh, humidifiers. They use sound waves to break the water up into a very very fine mist that uh, doesn't readily condense on the object it comes over which is good because using regular hot steam um, in commercial farms is problematic for our purposes because it will condense on everything. You might need to purchase another refrigerator unit to store all your mushrooms in. Um, you can also look at investing into a commercial side-by-side -side cooler. They are a lot more expensive but of course they're going to hold a lot more space because they don't have a freezer part attached. But uh, probably for yours and mine circumstances um, having more than one standard size fridge will be sufficient. And now we're going to talk about some of the options you have when it comes to uh, different grow spaces. Um, here you see an indoor greenhouse you can fit uh, two or three logs in this style. Um, you would put slits in it and run humidification inside. Um, and it would just be a small grow area. 
Now these larger style PVC greenhouses are great for doing uh, outdoor grows. Uh, you can see it's put together with your standard PVC and uh, there's some high quality plastic sheetings uh, mounted all the way around it. Um, they're obviously too big for indoors but for outside they keep the rain off your grow and allow you to control the humidity and to extend the temperature. The most expensive items of all of these will be the pressure cooker which the large models cost about four hundred dollars. The uh, laminar flow hood if you buy that brand new that'll be about five hundred fifty dollars although you can make one yourself for a little bit cheaper and it's not too difficult. Um, also you're talking about a cost for refrigeration and the cost for building a greenhouse if necessary. Alright, well I'm glad you all are enjoying this video and the series. Um, please hit that like button and uh, leave your comments, it's encouraging. And uh, I'll see you next time.